This week on Personally Speaking, our guest is Father Francis Rella, a great priest and a wonderful human being. Stay with us. Hello and welcome to Personally Speaking. I'm your host, Monsignor Jim Lasanti, and Father Francis Rella joins me now. Father Rella is pastor of Our Lady of Perpetual Help, Byzantine Catholic Church in Toms River, New Jersey. He also holds faculties to serve in the Roman Catholic Archdiocese for the military services and holds the rank of major in the United States Air Force. Father Rella is a native of Brooklyn, New York. He holds a Master's of Divinity degree as well as a master's degree in music and nursing. He served as a paramedic in New York City on 9-11 and is the chaplain for the New Jersey State Police. Father Frank Rella has performed professionally as an actor and a singer, as well as having two published books and numerous articles. He's also married to Tammy, and together they're the parents of two adult children and one teenager. Uh, Father Rella is here with us today to tell us why he went into the priesthood, about his military career, his nursing profession, his family, and the faith and values that matter the most to him. Joining me now, I'm so pleased and honored to welcome to Personally Speaking, a great priest, Father Francis Rella. We're here with Father Francis Rella. We're going to talk about a lot of things, but Father Frank, let me say to you that uh, uh, there are people who are called, you know, hyphenates. There are people who have so many things that they do in their life that you wonder how in the world they get it all done. And you are a walking embodiment of so many directions you've gone in life, and all of them good, all of them in service to other people. But let's go back to the very beginning. I'm always fascinated by someone who gives their life generously, as you have, both in the military and in the clergy, to what kind of family formed you, the family of origin, what kind of people did you come from? Well, you know, I was uh, born and bred in, in Brooklyn, New York, and, um, you know, uh, you know both my brothers. Uh, you went to school with them, and <laughs> much, much different in personality, both of them. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, we're very close-knit family. My, my father uh, left my family when I was uh, um, uh, about five or six. He uh, abandoned my family, and, um, you know, uh, um, my grandfather really brought us up until, you know, I, I guess I was about 11, but my brothers were much older at the time. Uh, I think he passed when, uh, when Joe, my oldest brother, was in uh, Douglaston, uh, mm -hmm. probably when Joe was a junior in Douglaston. Um, and I remember all the priests and seminarians coming out for the funeral. Uh, it was was really a great thing, very, very impressive to me as a child. But, you know, uh, growing up in Brooklyn, you know, I, I went to uh, Catholic grammar school and, and Catholic high school. Um, my mother was uh, a very, very devout woman. She was the president of the, uh, um, the Pius X Guild, and uh, she, uh, uh, you know, we were always uh, uh, doing something at church. We were, you know, uh, altar boys or choir boys. Uh, my great grandmother, uh, she was living with us at the time, as, as well as my grandmother and my grandfather. Actually, we were living with them, and um, they, they were always in prayer, especially my great grandmother. You know, she always, she constantly prayed and she, she would, uh, she only spoke really uh, broken English and spoke uh, a dialect of, of Italian, which we all spoke in the house until she passed. Oh, okay. But um, yeah, but she would, you know, she would take us to church and, you know, there were very, very separate uh, uh, churches at the time. We were at St. Jerome's in Brooklyn, a very big church. B believe it or not, it was uh, 50,000 families, not people <laughs> so you, you think about it <laughs> there, there was a, a, a lot going on there and uh, my grandmother used to take me my great grandmother used to take me to church and that was the, the was the downstairs church the uh, and it was the italian uh ch people used to go down there that was made for them really um there was a lot of prejudice at the time uh oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and you know she she's take us there and we pray with her and you know every time we come to the uh the consecration uh, uh she starts to cry she she would just start weeping, you know. Um, it was that powerful to her to her that that she believed that it was really happening at that moment in time. So <laughs> it was you know great experience growing up. My family origin. Both my brothers went to uh, uh, high school seminary, college seminary. Um, 
And, uh, you know, we, we, everything we revolved around a church, we would church organists and, you know, singers, and that's what we did. Uh, let me, let me ask you, Father Frank, cause it's intriguing to me this weekend. I'm yeah. celebrating the, uh, uh, 2005, my dad went home to God and, but he, he was there for us and he mattered and we loved him a lot, but I'm trying to put myself in your shoes. Is it easy when, when dad takes off or hard to forgive him and to try to understand what in the world could have motivated him? You know, um, it, it is dif difficult to forgive him. You, you know, I, I was uh, getting ordained a deacon, and at the time, and and the bishop turned to me and said, because uh, he wanted to pray for my father, and he said to me, uh, "What's your father's name?" And I, instead of telling him his name, I said, "What do you want to know?" <laughs> <laughs> you know, and uh, um, I, I, I certainly I, I forgive him, and I and I've forgiven him, but it took a long time uh, because you know you, you kind of feel betrayed. Um, uh, if a parent leaves, if a parent doesn't pay attention to a parent abandons you, whatever that is, um, it, you, you do take it personally, even though I know it wasn't about me, <laughs> uh, but at the same time, it really was about me and it was about my brothers, you know, uh, to never look back and never say, you know, what are those three, uh, knuckleheads doing right now? Are they, are they, are they okay? Are they, you know, uh, are, they, are they making it okay on their own? Uh, are they taking care of their, their mother? What, what's going on there? You know, I, I know my oldest brother uh, reconnected with my father close to his death, and, and I'm glad he did that. I really am. Um, we never uh, did. Uh, I think the hurt was still there at the time. And uh, but, you know, the, the hand was never uh, stretched out to us either. You know, uh, so it was it was difficult. But yeah, it, it is difficult to forgive. Um, so many other things in my life, you know, it has been difficult to forgive. But uh, I, I as a priest, I'm, I'm obligated to do it, and that's that's a good thing, because <laughs> I, I wouldn't have done it on my own. I have to t tell you honestly. <laughs> of our vocation is you really can't call people to forgive if you're not trying to do it yourself. Now, right. The listeners and watchers who may or may not understand, uh, Father Rella is um, an Eastern Rite Church, or some people say Byzantine, but but uh, could you explain? Because I'm willing to bet that the majority of Catholics who are listening to a program like this probably have no idea what that means. So tell us what it means to be involved with the Byzantine or Eastern Rite. Sure. You, you know, I, I found out uh, um, during uh, my teen years that uh, uh, the, the place of origin in Italy that we came from in body, body Italy, um, had uh, uh, the St. Nicholas Basilica. Um, they have a, a chapel there for um, a Greek Orthodox, you know, and 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 um, that's kind of a, a mixed uh, group of people there. Well, I found out that that my, my family of origin came from that 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 group, and um, you know, um, when I was in my teens, um, I started worshiping uh, in, in the Orthodox Church, you know, and it was something that I did, and you know, I never thought anything differently, you know, and 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 you, you know. There, there are Eastern Rite Catholics, which are in full communion with, with Rome, the Pope of Rome, Pope, uh, Pope Francis. And that, that's who I belong to now, you know. And, you know, my, my, my bishop did a really good thing. Uh, my bishop's a really smart man. <laughs> you know, he, he didn't want to, uh, when, and I'll, I'll kind of tell you how I made the journey really in, in, in uh, Reader's Digest form. But, um, uh, you know, I was, I was an Orthodox priest. I got ordained to the Orthodox Church. Um, and uh, somewhere along the line there, I said, y you know what, um, I, I, I want to be a Catholic, you know, I want to be a lay Catholic, and how do I go about doing that now, you know, and, and after talking to uh, many of the, the Catholic chaplains in the military, I said, hey guys, you know, um, here I am now, <laughs> I'm an Orthodox priest, you know, I, I uh, canonically, I, you know, I'm regular in the Orthodox Church. I said, what do I do? And they, they said, well, we don't know what you do. You, you're a priest, you know, that you have you have valid orders. It's not like, you know, if you're a Protestant, you know, you could just start worshiping. Uh, anyway, uh, the uh, the president of the United States Catholic, Catholic Bishops right now, uh, Bishop Brolio, Archbishop Brolio, um, and, and they got in touch with him. And what a great man, you know, uh, uh, on every level. <laughs> and, and he got in touch with me and he said, hey, uh, Father, he said, I heard you, you're, you know, you, you want to be a Catholic. And I said, I, I, I do, Archbishop. And he said, um, he said, would you consider uh, staying in and being a priest? And I said, I said, well, I said, you know, I said, I'm a married man, you know, I can't, I can't, I, I, this is not something I can do. He said, no, no. He said, you know, it's, it's actually easy for you because, you know, um, you have, you, you, you were part of the Orthodox Church 
by birth, really. He said, you know, and he said, uh, um, and, and uh, for you, it's just a matter of uh, uh, getting vested at the altar. He said, and he gave me the choice. He said, you know, would you like to be a, um, would you like to go into the uh, Roman Rite or you like to go into the Byzantine Rite? And I said, well, I said, I, I know the Eastern Rite better. That's where I think I belong. And he said, okay, but you, you'll have to be what they call a bi-ritual priest, which means I can serve in the Roman Church and I could serve in the Byzantine Catholic Church. Uh, I came in in August of 2014 into the Catholic Church. I was received in as a priest okay. at that time. And in in June of 2014, Pope Francis said, you can start, the Eastern Rite can start ordaining married men now. So I, it, it kind of wouldn't even have mattered, but I'm glad that they did go through that vetting process and not have any kind of canonical issues with me. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we, we are uh, a Suryur's church, which means, you know, we are independently, we, we, we have our own bishop, we have our own metropolitan, but we are on, you know, under the Amafor or the, the, you know, Apostolic See of Rome, you know, so um, we are still, you know, we were communion, full communion with, with the uh, Holy Father, Pope we Francis. Same family, no doubt about that. Now, you, but you raise a couple of things, Father Francis Rell is our guest. Um, one of the things I want to know is because you've lived it, you know, Pope Francis for a while was seemingly uh, entertaining the idea of opening the door slightly to a, a married clergy and yes. uh, I don't know if that's going to happen or not. But I wonder, because you've actually lived that vocation, is it doable? Is it a reasonable way to live? Is it hard to live? Is it something you can see that might be an advantage to the Roman Catholic Church to do? As a man who's lived both as priest and as married man and dad, uh, is it doable from your perspective? Well, yeah, it is. I mean, it's 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 a lot different um, as far as everybody's sensibilities towards you know having a married man. Uh, even even when I serve in the Roman Rite and the Latin Rite, it, it, it you know at first it was kind of problematic. Uh, somebody that you know and I know very well uh, said to me, and I was I was a chaplain, I was a Catholic chaplain in the in the Air Force. I still am in the Air National Guard. He said to me, he said, uh, Father, he said, you know, whatever you do, don't tell the parishioners that you're married. <laughs> he said, because they won't understand and they might leave. <laughs> so, I mean, it was that kind of prejudice even even around priests that, that, that might think that. But, you know, uh, if we look at some other models, you know, I was, uh, I was a nurse practitioner. I still am. Um, you know, I, I worked as a, as a paramedic. And that those are all vocations, you know, your, your father, your dad worked as a police officer, all of these things where, you know, uh, family sitting at and, and it happens, I have to tell you, every holiday, <laughs> we're sitting at the table, and we're ready to break bread. And I get a phone call and, and somebody's in a hospital, you know, and they need they, they need holy anointing or, or whatever it is. Um, it happens more often than not, um, especially during these times of COVID. But you know, um, it's it, it's it's what a doctor does. You know, you get up in the middle of the night. Well, you know, uh, my, my wife Tammy, she, she gets up with me, and, and she makes me a cup of coffee or whatever it is. And and when I come back home, that you know, there's a plate of food on the table, and and you know, and nobody's getting upset about it. But I think that the big part about it is is that uh, everybody has to be all in with it. You know, just just if you were a surgeon or or, or whatever other uh, 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 service career you had they really have to be all in and i you know and my family can't agree on anything but they can agree that we're all in when it comes to the church so yeah it's absolutely doable you know you, you have to work a job usually and at the end of the day you know you still have to uh care for your family you know you have to be there for them but they have to really know and it's 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 not like our protestant brethren and i'm not poking uh, holes at them at all i think they're great I work with them all the time but you know, you, you the job of a priest is different. You know mm -hmm. that must come first, and whoever you marry or have you mar you're married to, they have to understand that. You know, and and that God, that God comes first, and, and and it does come first to them too. Uh, so it's 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 kind of a whole package thing you have to do. But is it doable? It certainly is. It's a whole lot more work, I think, on some levels. Um, but but certainly, you know, and I think it enriches your ministry. Mm -hmm. um, uh, in, in lots of ways, uh, not that you know, celibacy I think is is a gift um, for for those who who voluntarily do it. You know, um, it's 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 a tough thing to do. Uh, I I lived that way for a long time, and and it's it, it's uh, it's it's a lot to do um, without you know um, uh, having that 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 companionship and also so, somebody else that's 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 kind of on your side 
on this side of the grave, you know, that somebody is really, okay, this is what you have to do. I can't tell you how many times that, you know, I, I wanted to throw it all in. And, and Tammy said to me, what, what are you doing? You, you, you're not looking at the whole picture right now. Oh, <laughs> this, is, this, this is a big part of it, but there's another part of it I'm fascinated by, and I have to ask you about, Father yes. as well as our guests, I'm personally speaking. You know, I would feel a great sympathy for, a great empathy for your children in that, uh, you know, the son or daughter of a priest, I would imagine, is watched more closely to see whether or not they're good kids or not. Uh, are your kids good kids? Did you ever have problems? <laughs> oh, did, did I ever have problems with them? Uh, when do we want to start? <laughs> of course. I mean, like any any uh, American father growing up in this era, you know. Uh, but you, you know, I think that they, uh, because they had that background, and, and they got it from they got it from 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 my wife. They got it from Tammy. She took them to church. She made sure she did all of this. You know, when I was doing other stuff, you know. Um, and, but but I think that yeah, they are watched more. Uh, but they kind of uh, uh, gravitate towards that. You know, I, I never had to tell my children. You know, you have to go to church. They're there, they're there every Sunday. Um, uh, you know, especially the, the two older ones. You know. Bouncing around doing other things, but you know, uh, found a path to where they need to be in their element. My my oldest, my younger daughter, uh, just got sworn in as a uh, as an attorney uh, in New Jersey. She's worked for a judge. Um, she went to she went to Tory University out in Long Island um, mm -hmm. for for law school. My my oldest daughter, uh, you know, she is is doing a, a lot of stuff. She's a graphic artist. She's a, um, um, a voice actor. She, you know, she does a lot of video content. Both of them are in the Air National Guard, uh, uh, and, and they they both went to public affairs school for the for the Air Force. Uh, and then, you know, we had a blessing. I had a, I have a son. Uh, his name, believe it or not, is Richard Joseph, after my two brothers. <laughs> and he's 13 years old. He came much later in life. Oh. Um, and, and, you know, the great thing about that, too, is that, you know, he's on the altar with me all the time, whether I'm here uh, at the uh, Byzantine Catholic Church or I'm at Fort Dix doing a Roman Catholic Mass. You know, he's serving on the altar. This is what he wants to do. You ask him, and he says, uh, I, "I want to be priest." You know, <laughs> so at thirteen, fine. You know, let's see what happens. But um, he, you know, I, I think that you know uh, um, they they find their way without you having to tell them. Just I, kind of, I, I guess you know, being an example that the ch church is important to us, and this is this is kind of the family business, you know, so to speak. <laughs> yes. What what. Uh... Obviously, this is one good woman who's uh, helped and formed a family with you. Tell me about Tammy. Tammy, well, you know, I, I met her. I um, uh, had a really bad breakup um, in my 20s, uh, a terrible breakup. And, and you know, I, I didn't really uh, acknowledge it at the time, but it was it was terrible. You know, I was uh, I was in bad shape and, and I, I was out doing summer stock. Um, and I was doing it with my, my brother, Rich, and I were doing summer stock uh, in South Dakota, in the hills of South Dakota. <laughs> and there were a couple of uh, um, couple of professors that, that taught at the university. And I said, hey, Frank, why don't you come, come to school, come to college? Because I, I, I didn't go to college at the time. I was in my mid-20s and I, I never went to college. And, and they said, uh, um, we'll give you a scholarship, you know, just come, come there, you know, you'll be a theater major. And I said, okay, this sounds like fun, you know. Um, and uh, trying to get my, my mind off for other things. And uh, I started dating this girl, and from the, from the, and I, I liked her, and I went there to the to the college where she was going to school. Uh, and so that was another incentive. And then she broke up with me. So, <laughs> and I, I have to tell you, the best thing to do when somebody breaks up, and this is a, as as a, a therapist too, is go out with other people. I mean, find somebody else. There's always somebody else there, you know. Um, and the somebody else happened to be Tammy. You know, I was I was passing by the music uh, department one day, and I heard somebody playing saxophone. And I, and I stuck my head in, and this beautiful blonde girl playing saxophone. And I said, "Boy, I really like to go out with her, but she'll never go out with me." <laughs> and then we we kept on uh, bumping into each other. And um, what happened was uh, she kept on saying. Uh, playing really hard to get no no not really saying no but you know i and then we happened to be in choir together and she sat right next to me i think it was providential you know i found out later on she wasn't really playing hard to get she just has adhd and and she can't make decisions <laughs> um but uh, all of that aside it kind of took the air out of my sails but um yeah so i i met her and and she was a musician and she did theater and uh, really, uh, she was from a good uh, um, Presbyterian family. Um, uh, she, she converted into, uh, she, she's a Roman Catholic, 
you know, she, she became a Roman Catholic in, in, uh, in college. You know, so, listen, you talk, I'm thinking in so many ways, this all enhanced, I'm sure, your ability to counsel real people, to, to raise a family, to, to go through the heartbreak of breaking up with people you thought this might be the one. And, and so there's got to be a deep sense of understanding on your part of what people are going through. You know, people say to me all the time, well, how can you do marriage counseling if you're not married? But you come with the richness of being able to say, yeah, there's, there's good and bad days, but you work it through. And here's how it's worked for me. Now, one of the things Father Rella mentioned to us early was that he had the uh, among the many, many aspects of his life and vocations, he's also served people as a paramedic. And for those who don't know, there's a book out there called Manhattan Medics that he wrote about the experience of being a, a medic, a paramedic. And specifically, I want to talk, for, if we can, Father L, about uh, the experience of, of 9-11 and what that meant to you, how it changed you. Uh, tell us a little bit about what happened to you on that day. Well, it changed me in many ways. You know, I, I became a paramedic because I was an actor at the time and I needed a a, a job, um, a, a good day job. And I had been in the Navy Reserve and I was a corpsman. And I said, you know, let me be a paramedic. They make they make pretty good money and I can work nights so I can go to auditions during the day. I don't, never have to miss an audition. And and I, I did that for about less than a year. And then 9-11 happened. I was uh, I was working in, in St. Vincent's Hospital down in downtown Manhattan. Mm -hmm. um, Closest, closest hospital to the World Trade Center. And I had just gotten off a shift and uh, headed, headed on the way home. And people were calling me up and saying, hey, you know, you got to come back in. And at the time, you know, cell phone service was not like today. You know, it was spotty. And um, I got the call and, and I walked into my house in New Jersey and, and Tammy was there watching TV and she was crying. And I said, what, what's going on? And she said, um, the, the uh, World Trade Center got hit. And I said, well, let me call up. And I called up and, and they, uh, they said, get back in right away. The World Trade Center was hit by a plane. Now, I'm thinking a Piper Cub or something like that. And, you know, maybe a couple of hundred injuries, you know, uh, if even that. Um, rushed back in. I, luckily, I got, I got behind this guy who was going back into Manhattan. He had his uh, license sirens going in his car. And I got alongside him. I showed him my, my uh, uh, paramedic shield. And he said, just follow me. You know, and we, we went we went in there and I and I saw from, you know, the corner of my eye that one of the towers was on fire. And I said, oh, this, this looks pretty bad. Um, so we got up to the Lincoln Tunnel and the FBI was closing the Lincoln Tunnel. And I said, I got to get in. I'm a paramedic. And he said, you're the last one going in. <laughs> I was the last one going in the Lincoln Tunnel that day. And I went through. And after that, they closed it down. Uh, got, got in there, got my ambulance. Uh, one of the uh, uh, towers was falling lifted my ambulance off the ground, um, went, went around to St. Vincent's because the whole place was backed off. Anyway, uh, we, I got, I got one of my partners. We went, we went, um, up to the towers just as the North tower fell. And then, uh, we were just looking for survivors. We got, we had, we got a few, uh, brought them back. Um, and then we were in front of building number seven and, and then that collapsed on us. And, and you know, we, we got through today. Uh, but it did, it did change my, it changed my life. It changed, you know, my, my perspective of what I, I didn't want to be an actor anymore at that point. I said, you know, for the time being, I'm going to be this and I'm going to try to get back into the military. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it was October 2nd. So September 11th, I think October 2nd, I reported to Fort Hamilton. And basically, they told me they were going to take me after they took women and children, you know, like in a lifeboat. <laughs> they said, we're not going to take you. you know, there's so many things wrong with you. <laughs> we're not taking you. You know, um, so I said, well, you know, there's got to be another way I could serve. And, and you know, I just tried. So uh, I, I, I went back and forth, tried to get in multiple times into the military again. And um, one guy said to me, he said, you, you know, he said, um, if I said, the, the big thing was my age. I was 40, 42 at the time. And, and he said, um, I said, how can I get in? And he said, the best thing you could do is, he said, yeah, go to nursing school. He said, they really need nurses right now. And I said, okay, I'll go to nursing school. <laughs> so I went to nursing school so I can get in the military. Uh, we only have a few more moments left, but I want to ask you this. You know, one of the ways you and I have bonded together over the years is that your brother Richie and your brother Joe were people I loved and admired so much. Um, Way, a priest or not, when people that we're close to and we we have emulated in so many ways pass away, I think in both cases too young. Um, how does a priest handle that kind of loss? Do you go through a, a, a shaking your fist in God's face to be angry at the situation, or does your faith allow you to say, like Mary, be it done unto me according to your will? Yeah, it, it's it's a little bit of both. 
but but I think I think that the 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 part of it that kept me going is knowing how much they believed that there was something on the other side. You know, I didn't have enough faith to believe that, but they always believed it. You know, I, I had the, I had the privilege of, of giving them holy anointing at the end as I did my mother. And I, I remember when I gave um, holy anointing to Rich, you know, um, w when I finished the prayers, every, all the lights went out, his eyes were open and I had to close them. And I knew at that very moment that that he was with a uh, father in heaven. You know, I really I knew that, and that 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 gave me faith in it. Me, me alone, I, I don't have the faith to, to handle any of that because I, I don't see the purpose of it other than to you know to to, to enter into eternal life. And uh, it, my faith is not strong enough to believe that on my own. Uh, b before I leave, I have to tell you one thing. You know, um, you had such an impression on me as as a, a young uh, young boy. Actually, you know, um, uh, you may have people telling you that 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 you know because of you they wanted to the priesthood. Well, because of you, I think I became an actor. Uh -huh. You know, um, it, it's it's the truth. You know, I was I was in the sixth grade at the time, and you were so kind to me, and you know. Uh, I was so I was so fascinated by being an actor at the time, uh, and you said to me, you, you said, "Hey, come on, uh, why don't you watch it from here?" And, and you brought me, uh, and I watched the whole second act of Fiddler on a Roof from that vantage point, and it, it, that changed my life. It, it really did. You know, you made such an impression on me, and then and then throughout the years, uh, you know, as, as a priest, you know, uh, on what you do and how you do it. I want to thank Father Francis Rella, Father Frank, for being with us. Uh, we haven't even scratched the surface of the number of ways in which he has served God by serving God's people, uh, whether it be in, in the military or through his parish work or as a dad or as a husband. Uh, you're an amazing man who has lived multiple lives and all of them in service to other people. And God must be so pleased with you. I, I'm just so grateful to you, Frank, for being with us. I hope you'll be with us again and keep on doing the wonderful work you're doing because you truly inspire even an old guy like me to keep on <laughs> by your generosity and goodness. So thank you for being with us, and we'll see you again soon. Thank you, Monsignor. God bless you for all you do. Thank you. As we end today's program, I want to thank you. And if you need to reach out to me for any reason, you can reach me at personallyspeakingpodcast at gmail.com. This program, aside from being on the Catholic channel on Sirius XM, is also on YouTube. Please hit like and subscribe. Personally Speaking is also on Facebook at Personally Speaking with Monsignor Jim Asante. We're also now on Instagram at Personally Speaking Podcast. I'm privileged to serve as host and executive producer, Personally Speaking. Our producer is Lisa Jandovitz. We'll be with you again next time on Personally Speaking.